to the On The Air podcast, a companion to On The Air magazine, a bi-monthly magazine from ARRL for beginner to intermediate ham radio operators. I am your host and the editor of On The Air, Becky Schoenfeld, W1BXY. Every month, the On The Air podcast extends material found in On The Air magazine to help you learn about the many things the ham radio hobby and service has to offer. The On The Air podcast is sponsored by ICOM for the love of ham radio. Welcome to the May 2025 episode. This month, we are back once again with ARL education specialist, Wayne Green, KB4DSF, the host of the new monthly live stream, on the Air Live, which premiered in January. Uh, he's here today to talk a bit about the antenna builds that he walks readers through in his article, Building Simple Antennas for 10 and 15 Meters, which appears in the May-June 2025 issue of On the Air magazine. Welcome, Wayne. Oh, thanks, Becky. It's always great to be here. Good to have you back. So um, now that it's May, um, everybody's favorite on-air event, ARL Field Day, is just a little more than a month away on June 28th and 29th. And uh, having a fun and successful field day always requires some level of preparation. Um, so I thought we would invite you back to walk folks through the antenna builds that you discuss in the May-June issue of On the Air, which are simple wire antennas for 10 meters and 15 meters. Can you talk a little about why you chose these specific bands? Uh, sure. So um, what's nice is we're uh, we're right at the peak. Uh, we're starting to get on the other side of the peak, I suppose, the solar cycle 25. So what that means is that 10 meters and 15 meters are alive right now. Uh, during field day, when we're not in that sunspot cycle, 15 meters may, may or may not be open. 10 meters, you can pretty much count it as dead. Uh, but they're mm -hmm. wide open and um, and just and going crazy, if you will. We call it hot. You know, they're, the bands are hot. Uh, and uh, the other thing, too, is for the technicians, technician operators, even though they have a little bit of HF privileges and other bands where it's CW only, in 10 meters, they have sideband or phone, right? Um, CW and digital uh, privileges in the 10 meter band. So this is a great time for them to execute um, or to, to be able to participate in field day in those bands. Uh, another another reason is, is the uh, the antennas. So if we call the math, it's the math that we learned, you know, when we studied for our technician license. Uh, yeah. By the math, the size of those antennas are much smaller than what you would deal with with other HF antennas. And you don't have to deploy them as high either. So it just seems to be a really good time for people to go out and give 10 meters and 15 meters a try, especially if you're, if you've not participated in field day before, or if you're a technician, jump on 10 meters and enjoy it. Yep. I certainly remember from uh, back when I was a technician, 10 meters, you know, there was a lot of fun stuff to do there and a lot of uh, fun stuff to get on 10 meters. And and I remember right. thinking, oh my God, I can't believe I worked that country and that country and, and all on 10 <laughs> meters. Yeah. Right. So these look like very simple wire antennas. Right. Um, being that the on-the-air audience tends to be um, either beginners or even folks who have been licensed for a long time who maybe have not done that much with their license, um, they might be beginner builders as well. Sure. So what might a beginner builder need to know about the process of building these antennas? Yeah, so um, the nice thing about these antennas, again, they are they're typically smaller to deal with, so a little bit easier to handle and to manage as, as you build these antennas. And when we say build antennas, we typ we're typically building them just out of, you know, simple wire. Um, so uh, the antenna building is one of those aspects of ham radio operator that, uh, ham radio that many operators absolutely enjoy doing, and I'm no different. I love to build my, uh, my antennas. So with these antennas, if, you, if you've never built uh, an antenna before, if you follow the instructions, you should be, you should do uh, uh, really well. But one, like, couple of hints and kinks or tips or whatever, right? Um, if you measure, if you do the math for, say, a 10 meter antenna, I believe that half wave comes out to a little over eight and a half feet, uh, no, 16 and 16 and a half feet, something to, something to, that, uh, to that effect. That is for a half wave. If you're going to make a dipole, then it's going to be two quarter wave length elements, right? So you just take that half wave that you cut and, and then cut it in half. But what I wouldn't do or what I don't do is I don't cut 
my antennas, if I'm cutting the wire, I don't cut it exactly by what the math says. Because the thing that the math does not account, account for is your operating conditions. What's the ground like? How conduct, conductive is the ground like where you, where you live? Or maybe other things that may be around the antenna or how high you can get the antenna. All of those is going to affect the efficiency of that antenna. So what I do is I select a frequency that I'm going to operate. I say the I say I'm going to go with the 10 meter band and I'm going to go, I say I'm a technician, right? The nice thing about the technician's portion of the 10 meter band is it's small enough that one antenna will probably cover the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I would shoot for right in the middle of that technician uh, side. And I've got that written down. Uh, I believe it's 28.25 megahertz is like right in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and if I do the math, I, I'd already mentioned it was 16 and some odd feet. So I'm going to have eight foot, eight and a half foot uh, elements or what, uh, whatnot. I'm going to cut those a little bit long. And the idea is, if you remember, when in, when you build an antenna, you build it for a specific frequency. All antennas are cut to resonate at a specific frequency. It just happens to be that what makes up that antenna provides the ability to be able to operate over a bandwidth of frequencies. Um, you know, depending to stay within an, uh, a, a certain SWR, I usually choose uh, two to one. So I have a two to one SWR bandwidth for my uh, my antennas. That's probably going to be more than sufficient to handle all of the technician portion of the band. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll get the antenna built. I will uh, get it hung at the height it's going to be for a 10 meter antenna. It's less than nine feet. That's all you need uh, for mm -hmm. it to be uh, to, for it to be efficient. Yeah. Put an the antenna analyzer in the air. In the air, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if, if I'm doing a dipole, right? If you're doing a vertical, it's it's different. It'll, it'll probably be on the on the ground, which I discussed both. Uh, mm -hmm. in that article. But yeah, I'm talking about a dipole here. So nine feet in the air, that's uh, that's as high as you really need to go. Um, put an SWR meter on it or an antenna analyzer, and then you just start cutting off. Because what happens is if you make that antenna long, it's going to end up at a frequency lower than what you intend. But as you cut each end, and you want to cut evenly, and you don't want to cut a lot, you're just literally cutting off the ends uh, little by little and watching that analyzer until you get to that till it starts to resonate exactly where you want it to resonate and then you got that antenna up and running so biggest thing cut long um uh, measure long <laughs> cut many times <laughs> that's, so that's uh that's 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 a piece of uh advice there for that yeah great um so um so those antennas and instructions for building them are, are in the May June issue of Up in the Air, mm -hmm. and what right. we have coming up um, for On the Air Live, the live stream where you uh, are there to take questions and walk people through things. Uh, the next one's coming up May twenty seventh. Is that That's right? Correct. Yeah. Yes, um, and uh, so you'll be talking about those antennas. And um, what you what you'll really be focusing on is FT8 for field day, um, and getting on the air with FT8 and FT4 for field day. Right. So, um, and you're going to be walking folks through um, FT8 in the May 27th. So, can you talk a little bit about what exactly are you going to cover on May 27th when you have that live audience with you that can uh, can ask for feedback? Sure. So, um, as you know, uh, many uh, ham radio operators know the 10 meter and the 15 meter band when they are open, they tend to be daytime only bands or when the sun sun is still out. Uh, mm -hmm. May 27th, it should still be <laughs> bright enough here or sunlight enough here for us to actually be able to operate and make contacts using FT8 and FT4. So when we air on May the 27th, I will have at least one, if not two, um, like maybe I'm going to have a 10 meter antenna built, a vertical antenna mm -hmm. uh, built. And I may have a 15 meter built as well. And I'm going to be running those uh, in my radio. You'll see the uh, my radio's uh, display on the on the screen. And we're going to attempt to make some contacts using FT8 and FT4 and show what the differences are in between FT8 and FT4. But, you know, we got to, we got to start from the beginning. It is, um, you know, how to download it, how to get it installed mm -hmm. and then how to get it set up, you know, get your sound cards chosen and such. I chose the FT8 and FT4 or the WSJTX suite. That's where those that, those uh, yeah. bits of software are found. I chose that because, especially if you've never operated uh, digital modes before, um, those have the, the WSJTX suite. It's its own standalone software. Yeah. And I find it to be probably the simplest one to get started, uh, to, to get started with. And FT8, right now, FT8 is like the most popular 
uh, digital mode out there. So for field day, you're going to have no problems making a lot of contacts um, on FT8, as well as on FT4. You're going to see a lot of FT4 as well. But other digital modes require, um, you know, another piece of software such as FL Digi or uh, maybe uh, Ham Radio Deluxe uh, or uh, uh, there's a, a plug in for Ham Radio Deluxe and I'm forgetting the name of it right now. And getting those set up can be a little intimidating, especially if you've never um, been with digital modes before or worked with digital modes. So I felt like this is a great, uh, great place to like, you know, dip your toe in and uh, and give it a try. So it's. So we're going to set it up. We're going to run those. We're going to run them with the uh, antennas that I'm going to have in, in my backyard. I'll be running and uh, cables in here to um, to operate. So uh, again, uh, daytime only. So that's something to consider. You're you're not going to be able to make really any about an hour or two after after it gets dark. Um, Ten meters and fifteen meters, or they're just going to go dead on you. By the way, something else about digital modes when it comes to field day. You know, so the, the, there's the old question: Is a field day an activity, or is it, um, or is it a contest? My answer is yes, <laughs> and it's it's actually both. And we're dealing with the contest portion of it right now. So all of your contacts are worth points. Digital mm -hmm. modes are worth two points. You get two points for every um, every contact you make in in a digital mode versus in say phone is one point. So. Um, so it's something something to consider as well. Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting that you point that out because that was my next question. So uh, <laughs> why why FT8 for field day? Because field day is often regarded as um, a, a fun operating event where mm -hmm. you can be on phone and and CW and uh, you know there's kind of uh, camaraderie and you can chit right. chat and it's like have a right. good field day you know what are you running hope you're having a good time yeah you too <laughs> good to hear you right. and you can't do that on the uh, the FT mode so what uh, so certainly um, the two points uh, for yeah. running digital is a benefit but what might be some other benefits to running uh, FT4 FT8 on field day well, obviously the two points, and it's uh, it's very simple to set up. I'm not saying that, that anybody shouldn't try to get jump on phone. I mean, the technicians have uh, phone privileges as well. So yeah, um, uh, definitely you you can do that. Um, but if you're going if you're going after the points, you know, uh, digital modes or CW. Now, one thing that we do, um, I operate with uh, with a club. I am our club's uh, pretty much our only CW operator. Uh, so that's pretty much what I operate during field day. But I do uh, go into other. Uh, folks stations there we got we'll have like three or four sideband operators they might want to take a break I'll jump in there and start doing some sideband or mm -hmm. um, so if you're a new especially if you're a new or any minute ham and you're say running field day say it's your first time you could definitely do this on your own there's a there's a rec, there's a class for that for sure mm -hmm. um, but I say I, I would I would uh, go out there find out your local who your local club is or where they are find out if they're going to be operating somewhere and get out there and operate with them uh, a mm -hmm. lot of times they're going to have a, a get on the air station that you may be eligible to jump on and then you can run these modes as well as or anything else. But um, for the digital modes, they are it's really simple to operate, especially the FT ones, very simple to operate. And uh, heck, you get the two points. So good deal. Yeah, yeah. can't beat the two points. <laughs> right, right. Okay. That's sure. Yeah. So the next on the air live session is Tuesday, May 27th at 8 p.m. Yep. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. And Wayne will be acclimating participants to setting up uh, FT8 and FT4 and using it um, mm -hmm. with an eye toward ARL Field Day. So right. if uh, if you want to register for the May 27th live stream, you can go to learn.arrl.org to register. Um, AR ARL members can register for free. Um, and you can watch past on the air live sessions there as well. That's learn.arl.org. Yep. So thanks again, Wayne, KB4DSF, for joining us today. Totally uh, I have no doubt Thank that you. we'll have you back again. Excellent. Okay, so thanks a lot. Um, I hope you all have enjoyed this episode. We will be back in June with more information about ARL Field Day. But in the meantime, feel free to send comments about On the Air to OTA at ARRL.org. And if you want to learn more about ARL membership, you can visit ARL.org. Until next time, I'm Becky Schoenfeld, W1BXY73.
Avenue 3.